Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Pac-12 basketball preview, along with the former Stanford point guard, Drew Schiller. Roxy Bernstein with you. Glad you're with us for another installment. And as we're getting right into the meat of conference action, week three of Pac-12 conference play. And first off, Pac-12 Player of the Week from last weekend, a sensational week for the Colorado Buffaloes and Carlin Brown at home as they swept the Washington schools. Big time performance from the former Utah player who transferred to Colorado. He led Utah in scoring two years ago. Now he's leading the Buffaloes in scoring 18 points against Washington and a career high 28 against Washington State. And really because of him, he's got Colorado sitting atop the Pac-12 right now. And he is the Pac-12 Player of the Week and the Buffaloes drew the only team in the league without a conference loss. Yeah, it was a favorable uh, beginning of the schedule for them, getting three home games. They take care of business. They beat Utah at home, and then they sweep the Washington schools. And now it's going to be a big test for them. They head to the Bay Area to take on Cal on Thursday night and Stanford on Saturday. So they're going to put that, uh, that first place record uh, on the line. Before we get to this week's games, let's take a look back at week two, and there's some impressive uh, victories. UCLA got a couple of uh, big wins at home, a home sweep for them. And the Bruins, who got swept in the Bay Area to start conference play, all of a sudden are right back in the thick of things. Yeah, and they really needed those wins. And on Thursday against Arizona, they were without Josh Smith, but Davis, David, excuse me, David and Travis Ware stepped up big for them. And then on Saturday, uh, they beat Arizona State. Josh Smith came back and had a big performance, and Zeke Jones with eight points and ten assists. So they're right back in it as they go to uh, USC on Sunday. And the Bay Area schools, Cal and Stanford, get a road split up in the state of Oregon in a thriller. What a sensational basketball game in Corvallis. Saturday night, four overtime, Stanford able to pull it out against the Beavers at Gill College. It was amazing. At the end of regulation, Stanford thinks they had won the game on a Josh Owens putback uh, as time expired. And then they go into a fourth overtime. It was back and forth. Um, and a huge win for Stanford after losing to Oregon on Thursday to be able to salvage that split. And likewise, Cal did the same thing. And for them, it was even almost more impressive because they had to wait almost three days to play that game. It was a late start uh, Sunday at 4.30. For, so for them to be able to have a couple off days and come back um, and really put it on Oregon in the second half, it was very important for Cal. Well, let's shift our focus to this week's action in Pac-12 play. And we'll start with the national FSN game Thursday night. From Tempe, Arizona, 7.30 Pacific Time, 8.30 Mountain Time, Arizona State hosting Oregon. Both teams coming off a loss, needing a win, and the Sun Devils are back at home. Oregon 2-2, two two, taking on the Sun Devils at 1-2. We'll see how Arizona State responds without Keala King, who was dismissed from the team uh, over the weekend to not actually play uh, in L.A. against UCLA and USC. Uh, and Oregon, DeVoe Joseph had a pretty big, perform big performances against Stanford and Cal last week. So uh, we'll see if Oregon can get back on the winning track. Each team has a road win already with Arizona State winning at USC and the Ducks getting a win in Spokane against Washington State. And road wins are going to be tough to come by in this league, and Oregon seems to play pretty well on the road. They do. They got a win at Washington State to start off conference play, and then, of course, they lost to Washington. But Dana Allman always has those guys ready on offense. They're constantly moving. They're, uh, they're very difficult to guard. As we mentioned, DeVoe Joseph is off to a great start, and E.J. Singler is also playing at a really high level. Also coming up Thursday night, a big showdown in Berkeley at Haas Pavilion, 8 o'clock tip. That game can be seen on Comcast Sportsnet California as the Golden Bears host Colorado, the only team without a conference loss. Carlin Brown against Allen Crabb, I think, is the big matchup there. Jorge Gutierrez will probably be guarding Carlin Brown, but as we talked about, the reigning Pac-12 player of the week, and Allen Crabb could have been with 26 points and a career-high 12 rebounds. 23 of those points came in the second half, so that's going to be a big-time matchup. Well, another big game coming up Thursday night at the McHale Center, Tucson, Arizona, as the Wildcats host Oregon State, a big game for both teams, 5.30 tip Pacific time, 6.30 Mountain time can be seen on Root Sports Northwest and also Fox College Sports Central. And for Oregon State, Drew, how do they bounce back after losing at home in four overtimes to Stanford? A big time emotional loss for Oregon State. Craig Robinson really needs to gather the troops and get them uh, back on track and they lost those first two games at the Washington schools came home beat Cal and loses to Stanford so they're going to need to play very well at McHale Center which is obviously one of the toughest places uh, in the conference to get a win but they've actually taken three of the last four from Arizona so we'll see if that trend continues and Arizona has so much young talent the freshman Nick Johnson Josiah Turner doing a good job for them they're coming off a good performance and they handled USC in LA yeah they salvaged a split as well they lose to UCLA but they get that win over USC on Sunday and Solomon Hill, he does a little bit of everything for them. They're returning home uh, to play the Oregon school. So uh, we, we've talked about how important it is to get road wins, but you always have to defend your home court in Arizona. Uh, we'll look to do that when they play the Oregon schools. 
Well, now let's shift our focus to the weekend. Oregon travels down to Tucson after playing in Tempe Thursday night for a 12:30 Pacific tip, 1:30 Mountain Time on CBS. Arizona hosting Oregon was well, going to prove to be a very pivotal matchup in this league. It will. Every game in this league is big, and Arizona gets Oregon State on Thursday, so they're going to need to defend their home court there. And it's a very tough, it's a very difficult road trip when you have to take that long bus drive between uh, Tempe and Tucson. So uh, Oregon will will try to take care of business at uh, Arizona. On a state, and then Saturday, the nationally televised game. Uh, it's an opportunity for everyone in this league when they play on the big stage to get a big win. Well, also coming your way Saturday afternoon, another national television game, FSN 1 o'clock tip. Pacific time for Maples Pavilion as Stanford hosts Colorado as the Buffs continue their tough road swing through the Bay Area. Stanford will take on Utah Thursday night. Colorado will be over at Haas Pavilion on Thursday night against Cal, and that's definitely going to be a big game. If Stanford beats Utah uh, on Thursday, Stanford will be 4-1 and one in league, and if Colorado goes into Haas and beats Cal, they'll be 4-0 and oh in league. Even if they lose, they'll still just be 3-1. and one. So that's a, the type of game where it could be between the first and second place team, between the second and third place team. So that is going to be a big one over at Maples. Well, Sunday is rivalry day in the Pac-12 Conference. Washington hosts Washington State 4 o'clock tip in Seattle at Alaska Airlines Arena in a big matchup as the Huskies coming off a win Tuesday night, non-conference game, a victory over Seattle U. The basketball version of the Apple Cup between these two schools. Washington State will be coming off a long layoff, having not played since last Saturday at Utah, so an eight-day stretch without basketball. Like you mentioned, Washington got to play a game uh, midweek on Tuesday night against Seattle U. Brock Modem inside and outside playing at an extremely high level for Washington State, and Tony Rowe the sensational freshman for Washington, so an inside guy and a perimeter guy doing most of the damage for those two schools. Well, the final game of the Pac-12 weekend will take place in L.A., the Battle of L.A., Sunday night, 6 o'clock tip, FSN, UCLA visits the Galen Center, and USC, and uh, always uh, an emotional game when it's the Battle of L.A., Drew. It is. USC is struggling right now. They're the only winless team uh, in conference play, but they make it very difficult for you on every possession defensively. Uh, Kevin O'Neill always has those guys ready to play. UCLA, of course, coming off the two wins at home against the Arizona schools at home at the Honda Center. Uh, but that's a big one for both schools. Uh, UCLA looking to get above 500 in league, and USC, of course, looking for their first conference win. So uh, there's no love loss when those two teams play against <laughs> each other. So it's going to be a very intriguing matchup. Well, that's a look at your Week 3 Pac-12 basketball schedule for Drew Schiller. Roxy Bernstein, glad you tuned in. We'll see you right here next week for your Pac-12 basketball preview.